Now let's go from loanable funds to endogenous money in five simple key strokes. First of all, the lending, uh, the amount of money in the account comes from lending created by the bank's lending rather than being deposited in reserves. So I flop reserves over there. Lending is from the bank to the impatient agent. The interest payments go from the impatient agent to the bank through its safe. And repayment goes to the loans over here. And then I simply flip a switch over here to show that I've changed over from loanable funds, which changes things like I no longer have uh, lending and repayment, changing the debt of the impatient agent to the patient agent. That's mainly what that particular change does. Now run this model, and you'll see several things that are very different about that to this to uh, the uh, loanable funds. For a start, GDP is rising. The actual extra money being lent by the uh, banking sector is increasing the amount of money in circulation in the overall economy. Uh, affecting both the amount of money directly in the patient account and in, in the impatient agent account. Then if I change the rate of lending, let's have a rapid uh, increase in the rate of lending, and off goes GDP, it accelerates, or a rapid decrease in the rate of lending. That brings the GDP down. Uh, change how fast repayment occurs, much faster, re uh, a much slower repayment, GDP recovers. Have a faster rate of repayment, GDP slumps. So. From this point, let's go back to the base scenario here of taking a five-year basis to double loans and 10 years to repay them. Uh, it matters. The level of GDP, the rate of change of debt, etc., etc., are essential parts of macroeconomics.